lot of optimism surrounding Indonesia. How is that translating into trade with your neighbors and the world? Well, basically, we've seen a robust uh, export growth. Uh, last year, uh, recovery after the crisis, uh, our exports grew at about 37 percent. This year, year to date, uh, year on year, it's about 30 percent. So, uh, uh, and it's increasingly with Asia. Uh, if you look at the last five years, our sh the share of our exports going to China, for instance, went from 5 percent to almost 12 percent. For, to India from 3 to 6 percent and similarly we've seen uh, some of the emerging ASEAN nations like Vietnam we're doing much more trade with Vietnam, uh, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, Singapore as well as Korea also increasing uh, but of course we're also increasing our trade uh, with the rest of the world uh, maintaining our share with US and Europe and also uh, increasingly with the emerging countries such as South Africa, Turkey and Brazil. Bottlenecks is a key issue and here we're talking about infrastructure. Uh, investors are concerned that it, it takes too long for instance to be transporting goods because the roads are congested. How is that being addressed? Well, basically, we're already growing at 6.5% despite the infrastructure bottlenecks. Uh, so we could actually grow at 8% once we do address the infrastructure bottlenecks. And we do now have a very uh, prioritized infrastructure uh, program. Uh, in the short term, uh, it's focused on the ports, Tanjung Priok, where 70% of the goods are being uh, transported. Uh, it, there will be expansion beginning this year. Uh, the, the road from uh, the, the container port road hopefully will be completed this year. And we also have a dry port container, which is going from the major industrial area. You clear your goods there, and then you go straight uh, to, the, uh, to the ship. Uh, so hopefully uh, the, in the short term, that's what we're going to do. In the medium term, uh, there's uh, a lot of infrastructure projects coming uh, on stream. So again, that's a huge investment opportunity uh, for, for many. One of the current trade issues facing Indonesia is the cattle trade with Australia. Australia has banned the cattle trade because it is concerned about how the animals are treated at the abattoirs. Uh, what's your view on this ban? Well, it's, it's a suspension, uh, temporary suspension, uh, and we are coordinating with the Australian side uh, to ensure uh, that there will be in the short term uh, some action plan to address this issue. I just want to stress that uh, Indonesia uh, is very committed to animal welfare, and uh, what was shown on the TV show is only a small percentage uh, of our slaughterhouses. So uh, there are a, a larger, large number of slaughterhouses which are already meeting standards of halal as well as animal welfare and this is what we're going to be coordinating with the Australian side to ensure uh, which uh, slaughterhouses uh, you know a positive list uh, if you like and then have an action plan to address the ones that are not uh, quite there yet and at the same time we will be accelerating our self-sufficiency uh, uh, cattle and beef uh, plan uh, and uh, this will be coordinated uh, with the agriculture ministry. Self-sufficiency will take time. Currently Indonesia imports about 60 percent of the supplies from Australia. Isn't this a critical time uh, for the suspension to take place? Uh, not really. I mean you have enough stocks domestically. I don't think anybody should worry about prices going up because we don't have enough beef. There's enough stocks domestically uh, in terms of cattle uh, and beef at the moment for the next six months we should not have to worry. Uh, are, you there's any short at, are you looking at alternative supplies? Yes, uh, Canada, so uh, uh, to be able to ensure sufficient stocks we will be looking at alternative supplies and we will also be uh, intensifying as I said uh, our self-sufficiency plan. Is there concern perhaps that it could be a trickle-down effect that perhaps it could affect the greater, the larger bilateral relationship between Indonesia and Australia? No, no. Uh, I think both sides are, uh, are working on this particular issue and it is actually already a part of our bilateral cooperation in terms of capacity building and increasing investments, we hope, from Australia uh, also in the breeding uh, and obviously the, if you look at the whole supply chain, it has to go all the way down to the slaughterhouses. So it was actually, there's already actually a plan. Uh, so now we, it, it's actually good. We, it will push us to implement, implement it uh, faster uh, and intensify our efforts. One of the key uh, exports of Indonesia is palm oil. What assumptions are you making about production and price going forward, especially <laughs> in the next six to 12 months? Well, I think production will continue to increase. I think it's been growing at about 10, 12 percent a year, and uh, this will continue. 
uh, and uh, prices. I think prices have gone uh, pretty uh, much uh, it, to its peak. Now it's probably going to be stabilizing and maybe uh, just fluctuating around the current level. Uh, maybe slight decline, that's about it, but I think it will still be above $1,000. So what's the biggest challenge, though, in, in maintaining production and prices at, at current levels? Uh, obviously, it's expansion uh, of uh, plantations, uh, but we already now, uh, with the, uh, the land uh, law coming into place and uh, clear uh, de demarcation, if you like, of which land uh, can be utilized for further expansion uh, of palm oil, uh, what they call the spatial planning as well as indicating or oh, this land is degraded land you can plant here as you know there is already a moratorium on peatland so no more on peatland that's for sure uh, but on degraded land and land which is uh, uh, in the planning allowed for agriculture uh, this is being finalized uh, including in new areas such as Papua we have a food estate plan as part of these six economic corridors uh, in Papua. China a key trading partner but is also trying to ease growth, ease inflation, is that concerned that perhaps that will affect demand for goods from Indonesia? Uh, I think a little bit, but uh, what Can we you quantify that? Little <laughs> little <bit? laughs> uh, well, we've been uh, our exports to China have been growing at close to 30, 40 percent. Maybe it will come down uh, a little bit, uh, the growth. I mean, but what we are exporting to China is basic, is based in a way basic needs. It's a lot of it is coal and palm oil, and I think coal because it's related to power generation. Uh, it's a long-term contract normally, so uh, I think it's pretty steady. It's, it's palm oil with cooking as uh, input to cooking oil uh, and food products, which may uh, uh, decline a little bit. But you know, we have other markets uh, for palm oil. India is still uh, growing rapidly, and we are also obviously exploring new markets and uh, increasingly processing it uh, domestically also. All right, Ibu Marapangesi, thank you so much for your time.